This is Sam Kirby, host of Cinema Stories. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Kim Meyer, the host of Choose to Rise here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Choose to Rise, where we talk about living with positive mindsets, how to increase our confidence, building our faith, and living out our life on purpose. A new show comes out via podcast every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if you want to catch the episode live instead, stop by Public House Media around 645 Central Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Choose to Rise. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. In 2014, Germany shocked the world by putting together one of the most talented and most dominant rosters in soccer history. Gotcha! It's Mario gotcha! Argentina, they were so close yet couldn't put it together when it most mattered. Now you've got an Argentina team that's hungry for revenge. Messi! And you never couldn't stop it! But what about England? Bastu, Rooney, Rooney Sturridge in the middle, there he is, go! Or France. And Sissoko! They're running riots! Or Spain. It's broken for Fabregas, now it's Iniesta, this is it! All 32 teams in this tournament are vying for the opportunity to hoist the World Cup trophy. Still to be Oh, he's done it! If you want to be a part of the action at Russia 2018, you're going to need your soccer passport, the World Cup edition. At Public House Media, we are excited to launch a new soccer podcast called Your Soccer Passport, World Cup Edition. Come alongside hosts and fans and guests from around the world as we bring you all the action from the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Because who knows, anything can happen in the FIFA World Cup. What about that? It's John Brooks! So come on, grab your soccer passport and join us for all the action from Russia 2018. A Hello everybody and welcome to Your Soccer Passport World Cup Edition presented by Public House Media. I'm Baxter Colburn. Thanks for being with us today as we are getting ready for our Group D preview here as we get ready for the World Cup 2018 Russia. Oh my goodness, the, the excitement is continuing to build uh, throughout all of us here on the Your Soccer Passport uh, staff. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting things to cover today, uh, but before we do that, I would be uh, just awfully remiss not to introduce my incredibly talented co-host with me. Uh, I have Ivan Sanchez and Luis Boraca. Gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good day to you, wherever you might be in the world. I know one of you is joining us from Peru. Uh, Ivan, I don't remember where you're joining us from, but either way, we're going almost international on this episode, so I'm excited to have both of you here on the show today. So how are we doing today, guys? Wonderful. How are you guys doing? Doing Uh, How are you guys doing? Doing well. Good evening, guys. Good to have both of you. So uh, this is exciting. Group D, I think, has um, a big, heavy World Cup favorite, as many folks know, of course, with Argentina. Uh, Lano Messi, of course, is is the main storyline, as many folks know, when it comes to this group. And many people are thinking, of course, oh, Argentina, they will sweep the group. They will be on their way to World Cup glory. But... There are, you know, possibilities that, you know, upsets might happen, of course, and we'll talk about their games and who they have to face coming up in just a minute. But, um, Luis, I want to start with you. Messi didn't win the World Cup last time in 2014. Is this a must-win World Cup for Lionel Messi and Argentina as a whole, in your opinion? Well, and good evening, guys, uh, once again. And, uh, well, actually, for Messi, for Lionel Messi... Uh, this is now or never, uh, once and for all, uh, because, uh, well, last, last time, four years ago, he was within an inch to make it uh, to the World Cup. Well, he had a black beast called Germany, a very big beast, uh, in Germany, which in my opinion was the main, the main candidate to go into the World Cup to, and make it. For me, Germany was in their best, and I have a theory that I want to. I want to change. Uh, I want to change the, the theme right now. Germany goes goes on to to win a World Cup every twenty years or twenty five years. So that was the time because they have a project. The fact is, Argentinians uh, don't have a project such as 
uh, such a successful as in the German school. And um, Lionel Messi is uh, something else, something from another world right now for Argentina. It's totally opposite. Uh, if you guys know about the history of Lionel Messi, he leaves Argentina when he was very young at age uh, 13, no, uh, nine years old. He goes to Barcelona. He knows another style of, of soccer. He knows how to play this game. And he becomes the the, the monster that, that, that we know <laughs> as today. So, uh, in my opinion, they compare... Well, actually, they compare it with, with, with many idols. Uh, the main one is Mar Diego Maradona. Right. Uh, they compare... He won the World Cup back in 1986. But... Uh, They want to compare it, compare to him with because he has many of the qualities Maradona had 30 years ago, and uh, well, Messi is another style of play. Uh, the fact is that Me uh, Maradona had some other amazing players that uh, won the World Cup with him, such as Burruchaga, such as Brown, such as Valdano, such as uh, Ubaldo. Uh, no, Ubaldo Fio or Daniel Passarella. Uh, well, I don't want to compare him with Messi's teammates right now. But uh, if you want to tell me uh, if Messi deserves this World Cup, well, Messi deserves it, but not too much Argentina. Hmm. Argentina, in my opinion, doesn't deserve it, but Messi does. Interesting. It's, an, it's yeah, it's an, it's two worlds apart. So, uh, Ivan, from your perspective, then, as we hear Luis talk about this in the sense that, you know, this is two totally different teams, obviously, with that Maradona team, but this Argentina team still is not strangers to having exceptionally talented players on their roster. Angel Di Maria, you've got, obviously, Messi, Aguero, Higuain, the list goes on and on of top-class players in Europe and just around the world, but how do you view what Argentina has right now? Is, is this their, their year to win? Uh, oh, guys, hold on a second. Hold on. I can't even. Ivan, I can't even hear you because Luis's side is way too loud. <laughs> Luis, are you able to uh, mute yourself when you're not talking? That way we can make sure that it doesn't creep over. Excuse me? Uh, sorry, I was saying, are you able to mute yourself when Ivan's talking because the background... No, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. So, running over the top. Sorry, I had a, I, I had a problem. My co the copy went down to the floor, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Oh, I think we're okay now. All yeah, right. Definitely. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. No, no worries. Luis, are you, you're a little quiet on your end anyway. Is there any way you... Can you get closer to whatever no no, no. I, I i had a problem with my coffee and it went down to the floor no 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 problem um i was just saying that ivan that you're ivan you sound very quiet on your end is there any way for you to to get louder at all on your end ivan yeah that sound better uh a little bit yeah if you can get closer i don't know are you do you have a microphone that you're talking into or how are you doing it uh, i'm doing it through my laptop okay so then maybe just get a little bit more personal with your laptop than when you <laughs> when you're talking that okay. way it sounds a little I'll bit just... more clear yep that's a lot better all right So anyway, if you want to just go right back into it, then Ivan. So since I was asking you about, you know, this this Argentina roster with so many talented players, where do you see them? Is this Argentina's year? We kind of heard what Luis was just saying about everything with Messi and the the talent on this roster, and saying that Messi deserves it, but maybe not Argentina. Where do you fall on that spectrum of how Argentina should play this season or this this World Cup rather? Yeah, I'm also in the same boat with uh, Luis. I don't believe Argentina is even one of the best four teams. Maybe not one of the best fifth teams. Put Brazil, Germany, Spain, France above them. I put uh, Belgium about the same with them. Uh, they didn't have the best qualifying. They qualified on the last day thanks to a messy hat trick. They struggled to score goals even with all all that talented um, all that talented squad. They only scored 19 goals, which is the same as Paraguay and the same as Venezuela, and only and they only scored more goals than Bolivia during all the qualifying. So. I don't think it's going to be their year. They have the talent to make it out of the group. They have the best friends, and they have a ridiculous amount of attacking talent, but they haven't been able to do the form the last couple of months. Looking at this Argentina team, they open up group play on June, not on June 16th. They take on Iceland in their first group game. 
realistically, are we both, are we all three of us kind of in agreement here, gentlemen, that Argentina, in theory, should sweep all three of their games? Or do you picture a Croatia maybe stealing a game or maybe a, a speedy Nigeria maybe pulling an upset or at least a draw? Uh, well, actually, when... When you want to play against Nigeria, uh, you're talking about, well, when it comes about Argentina against Nigeria, it's a very classic match in World Cup history. They have too many great matches uh, mm -hmm. between together. And, uh, well, actually, right now, it's, it's not going to be an exception, in my opinion, because Arge uh, Nigeria has many, many, uh, many certified players. Uh, uh, many certified good players such as uh, Victor Moses or John Nobby Mikkel of this or this young guy that it's impressing me the much like uh, Ineacho this Manchester City guy and uh, well there's not going to be any, any exception I think Argentina well they they bow down themselves to their to their king to Lionel Messi because without him uh, I don't think they don't have too much a chance Hmm. Uh, I have this theory that every great team must have a like like I would like to call like a skeleton, which is uh, one great player per position, uh, one great goalkeeper, one great defense, one great uh, defensive midfielder, one great uh, offensive midfielder, and one amazing forward. Argentina does not have uh, a, a complete skeleton, but they have a, such a complete player that can m even up the score. Uh, Nigeria, uh, they have uh, an, a, a, a not not great, but a, but a form skeleton like uh, I don't know, uh, Jonobi Mikel or Ineacho or Victor Moses. Uh, not 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 as much as the goalkeeper, but uh, uh, they have a very a very a very well built up team. Ivan, what do you what do you say to that? I guess in that regards, knowing how Argentina has, it's interesting too because I think Luis is hitting this on the head. If you take Lionel Messi out of this Argentina team. Who really are they? Are they? Do they have even enough to even say they're, are they, they're good enough to get out of the group, in my opinion, if Messi were to not even play a minute? But they're not contenders without Messi. Is that correct? No, they're not. They're not contenders. And I think the game that they could slip up on is actually the first game against Iceland. Iceland showed during Euros in the first game when they played Portugal. They are not afraid of the moment. They're not afraid of the limelight. They're organized. They're compact. And they're going to frustrate teams really well. And so I think that's where they can Argentina can get caught in the group stage. And we also have to remember they're not they're playing without their starting goalkeeper, uh, who got hurt. And so they're gonna have to both back up and I think it'll be really important to see Nicolas Otamendi, the Man City defender, like he does. Uh, he's had a great season with Man City, but can he replicate that with an Argentina team that isn't as well organized and as well drilled as the Guardiola led team? Yeah, and I would have to agree with that as well, too. Um, so, gentlemen, transcending away from Argentina as a whole, can we both all just kind of come in agreement and say Argentina is going to win the group? We can kind of feel pretty confident about making that uh, that prediction at this point. Yeah, they win the group for me. Luis? Uh, I, I, I didn't hear you guys very well. Can you repeat the question once again, please? Yeah, I was just saying, can we uh, both, uh, Ivan and I both agree that Argentina will win the group. Do you have any counter uh, argument against them not winning the group, despite the issues you mentioned previously? Well, uh, I must uh, not agree with you guys on this one because uh, this main group will define between Argentina and Croatia. Well, uh, Croatia has many great individualities, many great players, but they don't play too much as a team. They play too much like for the Eagles, like mm. Ivan Rakitic or Luka Modric. Uh, but in my opinion, there's going to be a great, uh, a great match between both those two, and the group will define between those two. I, I want to believe that Croatia might got, might gonna make it uh, as as fir as first as an, as Argentina can make it as a runner up. Uh, but this is but this is soccer. We 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 don't know how much how, uh, what can we expect. They can. Even Iceland can become a, a surprise, as, as uh, despite they uh, they lost 
many of the matches in a row. They have a losing streak right now, but uh, but one doesn't know how many how, how much can this lose, losing streak can last. Absolutely. Well, speaking of which, that's a good transition as we move away from Argentina over to Iceland as we are working on our Group D preview here on the Your Soccer Passport World Cup edition here on Public House Media. Uh, make sure to go and check out everything that Public House Media has going on over on their website, thephmedia.com, and follow them on social media as well. Gentlemen, looking at Iceland, uh, as you had previously mentioned, uh, they took the Euros by storm. They really rallied the entire, I feel like the entire world with their Viking chant as well, too. Uh, I have a hard time believing, unfortunately, that this team is going to do a lot at the World Cup stage purely because the talent level is though they might be good in their certain leagues and certain areas. A lot of those players that find success in other teams are there because they're with even better players than themselves. I don't know a lot of creative Icelandic players that are revolutionizing Premier League teams or La Liga teams or even Bundesliga teams consistently. So looking at Iceland at this point, they finished on top of their uh, Group 1 in the UEFA qualifying, so uh, that was a huge win for them, obviously. But at the same time, I don't believe Iceland has the tools, in my mind, to get out of this group. Ivan, let's start with you this time. Where do you look at the Iceland team, um, and how do they how do, how do they get out of the group if they get out at all? How do they even necessarily win a match? And if it does come, who does it come against, in your opinion? Well, I think it, there's some interesting things about it. They topped the group that also featured Croatia, so they're not going to fear Croatia when they play, when they play them, because they already played them in qualifying, and they already, they popped them, and they got the automatic qualifier while Croatia had to go through a playoff. So there's not going to be fear when they play. I think, um, yeah, you said they don't have that many great players. They do have uh, Gilpi Sergison, who plays for Everton, and he's a, a good, respected player in the midfield. I think they can frustrate teams like Nigeria, who won't be as organized, so I think they might be able to get a couple of results. I don't see enough for a win, but they have enough to frustrate teams with the history of Nigeria and Croatia, who tend to achieve in these tournaments. I think those two are the part of the game that they can get a, like a sneaky result. And Luis, your look at Iceland. Uh, we were talking about it with Argentina, about how they have that that key star player in you know in Messi. Of course, Iceland has Sigurdsson, as we just heard as well too from Ivan. But I, I, I worry that there's too many holes for Iceland. Unfortunately, that they're going to end up obviously being a great story as they always are. And you know, if if World Cup could be won on just pure excitement and passion, yes, this would be the team to cheer for. But Iceland worries me. I don't feel like they have the firepower to to make it out of the group. And if they do, they're a round of 16 first, you know, game by. You know, they're they're gone immediately, in my opinion. Well, as I said before, uh, I will not be. Such as confident because well, I'm. I have to say I, I gotta feel lucky right now because uh, two months ago, uh, my my team Peru uh, had the chance to play both Croatia and Iceland back in the states in friendly matches, and I had the chance to see uh, how the style of those uh, two very different teams uh, of of the same European school uh, are are all about. Well, when it comes about Iceland, I, I didn't saw an Iceland that can depend on one player. As far as they lost 2-1 against Peru, uh, I saw a team, uh, a very a very solid team that can depend on not too much of Gilfi Sigurdsson, but they have also uh, players that can uh, call my attention, like uh, Bikir Bjarnarsson, the midfielder, the offensive midfielder also, uh, or even the left back uh, Finn Bogartson. I don't, I don't know. Too, uh, I don't remember too much his uh, his first name, but uh, I uh, th- that guy gave gave uh, Yoshi Yotun uh, such a big headache back in <laughs> back in New York. Yes, I think that's important too because the way I judge a team, and maybe you gentlemen judge teams differently, but the way at least I do is that if you take away the star player, number one, what do you have left, and number two. You have to ha- play those what-if situations because it's not rocket science. People and the teams have to know this. Neymar is going to be targeted. Ronaldo is going to be targeted. Messi, any star player for any team in the World Cup is going to be targeted by opposing players. So God forbid that player get hurt. Who's the next man up? And do you feel confident enough in your roster 
and those other guys waiting in the wings to say, this is my chance, here I am, look at what I can do. Iceland, they've got some cheeky attacking players midfield-wise. They've got some lower-level Premier League players as well, too, but I still think the lack of high-quality experience and major leagues is ultimately going to end up dooming this Iceland team. I personally don't think they get out of the group. Yeah, I'm let, 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 I don't think they get out of the group either. Well, uh, I in this part, I'm going to agree with Ivan also. Same. Same same opinion. Uh, I don't think they're gonna they're not gonna make it right now. But uh, as I said before, I must not feel very confident because this soccer you don't know how how think what what thing you can expect. Also, right, exactly correct on that. All right, gentlemen, let's move away from Iceland. Let's head over to Croatia. Arguably the second best team in the group uh, is what many are calling. Uh, some are even saying that Croatia have the midfield to possibly make a deep tournament run. That that really stems around the fact of how good Rakitic and Modric play together. Now, both of them obviously are exceptionally talented for their respective clubs. We've seen them have exceptional uh, success for many different seasons in the Europe in, in the European leagues. Uh, of course, you've got uh, Modric playing for Real Madrid. You've got Rakitic playing for Barcelona. If there is any question on having, you know, arguably your team's two best players playing in the highest league on the best teams with the best players, well, Croatia, I think, kind of wins that hands down, at least in this situation. Uh, Luis, let's start with you in this situation. How important is the production of Modric and of Rakitic? Arguably, potentially, their last World Cup together because Modric is not a young player anymore. He's getting towards the tail end of his international career. He's probably got a lot in the club level still left, but internationally, this is probably the last time we're going to see Luka Modric running around on the international pitch. Well, we can we can deny that Modric has this big, great great mind for soccer. He's a, he's a genius. He's a brain when it comes about to be a mid, an offensive midfielder. Uh, a midfielder ca- that can create play, uh, that can create a, such as offensive plays, tactics. Um, he's a very complete player even for, for Real Madrid, but uh, I saw it be- between over the years that he cannot complement too much with uh, Ivan Rakitic, which, which has uh, another, style of, another style of playing such as in Barcelona, that in the mm-hmm. national team, uh, in Barcelona, uh, Ivan Rakitic uh, plays in a in a position that used to be occupied by the le- the legendary Xavi Xavi Hernandez. Uh, however, Ivan Rakitic in Barcelona uh, did uh, is not is not that guy that uh, that that can complement that place, uh, that can complete that place because. Let's face it, Xavi is a legend, but uh, Ivan Rakitic does it does it well. He's not he's not a he's not a guy that can lack of of talent in that position. That as a mixed mid mixed midfielder that can combine offensive things with defensive stuff when it comes to about to recover back the ball. Uh, but in the Croatian national team, Rakitic plays in a a hundred percent defensive place, which is not uh, his homework right now. He talks with the other midfielders. He talks also about. Uh, he talks also with the with the with the forwards, with the guys that are uh, on, on up. But uh, the thing I can say about Rakitic is that he cannot complement with Modric. It's not the they don't have the chemistry in the in the field. That can, that can have with the with the respective clubs with the, the respective teams, uh, I I truly believe that for that position, uh, if I were uh, the Croatian manager right now, I would try to put uh, Ivan Rakitic on the bench. Uh, this might sound very Ooh. very very suppressive. I would try to put him on the bench, and and bet for someone who has more offensive, uh, excuse me, uh, defensive uh, qualities such as Mateo Kovacic, which is a great young talent. He's a guy that can uh, fill that place. He does it at Real Madrid. He's the, he's the, he's the number two for Casemiro in that, in that club, and he does it also amazing, uh, amazingly well. He, he, he plays great matches every time he comes from the bench, but I truly believe this, this, this is now his time. His time for, for show his for him, himself, he's a young talent. He's like uh, 20, 24, 25 years old. So, in my opinion, he he still has that chance to make it. 
uh, in I, I'm I'm saying this when it comes about the great match with Argentina, because uh, I truly believe that Cro that Croatia can play uh, with Ivan Rakitic and and Luka Modric, insisting for the for the complement between those two with for the chemistry between those two but uh let's face it they still they do not make it uh, uh, together they they couldn't mm. do it in the, in the friendly matches against peru they couldn't make it be together in right, the right. last world cup and let's face it we have to bet for something else it's true yeah no i i completely understand that perspective as well too and it's interesting because you look back at the 2014 campaign for Croatia, uh, Ivan, and they arguably got drawn into the group of death. You know, you look at it, um, they had Brazil, Mexico, and Cameroon. I mean, Cameroon, take it for what it is, but Croatia struggled to keep the ball out of the back of the net. They had six conceded goals. They did score six goals, but four of those came against Cameroon as well, too. So I feel like every time the World Cup comes around, I always look at Croatia and I'm like, wow, they've got some good players. They've got Modric. We saw the uh, emergence of Mario Manzuki as well too in the 2014 World Cup and I'm like holy cow they've got some good players but I I think and I believe that Croatia can't put it together on the big stage and can't put it together with talented players and I think that's ultimately what kills them in big situations do you agree with me on that one Ivan? Yes and you also got Ivan Peretic as well on the team right. you have uh, Dijon Lovren as well he's from Liverpool so this team has, is loaded with talent. This is not a bad team on paper. You're yeah. right. And it's and I think it's now or never for these guys, for Croatia in general. They haven't been out of the group stage since 1998. And look at the talent they had last go around. And this team looks even better. But they they don't click. And they don't seem to click very well. And in the big stages, they struggle when there's expectations on them. Yeah. You saw the Euros two years ago. You saw it. Four years ago, in the final group match against Mexico, where the winner went through. And can these guys change the narrative? That's what I'm looking for for this Croatia team, because they should have the talent to make it out of the group. This is one of the top ten best teams, I think, in the world when they're on. When you look at the roster, when you look at the talent, and you right. look at all the different ways they can attack you, and they can get by you. So... It's really never never for them. So I'm expecting them to make it out of group. I think it's and I think them as professionals, they, they know that this is their their time. Rakitic is thirty, Modric is thirty two, uh, Mario Mandzukic is thirty two as well. These guys aren't young. They might have one more Euro in them, but besides that, this is like this is their last World Cup to make something. I agree. I completely agree with you on that one. All right, transitioning. So let's let's make this prediction now then. Do you do you believe Croatia gets out of the group? I say yes. Luis? I'm saying yes. Uh, I say yes, and I say as the leader of the group. Interesting. Okay. I'll have to make that a note that uh, Luis says that Croatia wins the group. All right. The last person, uh, the last team that we have to focus on here in our Group D preview here on Your Soccer Passport World Cup Edition uh, presented by Public House Media is Nigeria. Now, the headlines that keep surrounding Nigeria all have to deal with goalkeeping issues. And when you look at a team that is trying to win a World Cup, let alone just win a World Cup game, you obviously have to say, okay, who's our guy that's defending the sticks? We can think of great goalkeepers for you know not only World Cup teams, but just in general. You think of a great goalkeeper, you say, okay, I know that you know everybody could get hurt on the field, but we still have we still have this guy in net. We're gonna win the game no matter what. I don't know if these club teams that the Nigerian goalkeepers play for are professional because I've never heard of them, honestly. Um, and you know, trying to get more information about them, it was a little difficult to do as well, too. Does Nigeria have enough in the midfield and the forward department, or frankly, just on the defensive side as well, too, to keep the ball away from the goal mouth? And if the ball does get there... It's not going to be pretty, in my opinion. I think Nigeria is going to end up conceding more goals than they end up scoring and likely not even winning a game, in my opinion. Uh, Ivan, let's start with you on Nigeria here. How do you react to the Super Eagles and their chances of winning any games, let alone you know a game in the World Cup this year? I agree with you on their defensive uh, aspect of the team. The team does is loaded with a lot of attacking forwards. you got right. a lot of attack talent. You got Musa, you got Inatu, you got Alex Awobi, you have Victor Moses, and then right behind them you got John Obi Mikel, who's actually the only, who's the oldest player on the team at 31, which is kind of interesting about this team. 
It is, yeah. But um, they're going to have to outscore teams to win games, and I don't think they have <laughs> They're in the enough. wrong group to do that. Yeah, they're, they are in the wrong group to do that. And their most important game is the first one against Croatia. So these are two teams who people always expect something from, and it can and well, once things go south, things go south very quickly. So I think it's important for them to get off on the right foot and at least get a draw against that against Croatia if they hope to get something out of out of this group. Because if not, it can go it can snowball quickly down once they, go, once they play I, a very disciplined and organized Iceland team, and then they have to go up against Messi and Tina. So right, and I, I think it's interesting too because very rarely does this happen where you have to get you get to face a team that you faced in a previous World Cup group stage the next World Cup cycle again, and Nigeria and Argentina find themselves playing each other again. Let's not forget, though, Nigeria did finish second in their group in Group F. Let's also remember that they had Bosnia, Herzegovina, and uh, Iran in their group as well, too. So, no offense, but I feel like if they didn't get out of the group, they would have been viewed as a failure overall. So, they got four points, and they pushed Argentina in that final group game. I mean, they, they lost 3-2 to two because with some messy magic, but still... They did get out of the group, but they didn't have to deal with an Iceland and they didn't have to deal with a Croatia. I think we can look at the group here in 2018 that Nigeria is in and then compare it to the group that they had to deal with back in 2014. And uh, we can say it's night and day difference. Right, Luis? Excuse me? I, I didn't hear you very well. <laughs> no worries. I was saying that uh, the difference between who Nigeria had to face in 2014 in their group play to who they have to face now in 2018 arguably are night and day because Nigeria had to face Argentina, yes, but they only had to face Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Iran, not Croatia and Iceland. Well, uh, actually, right now, uh, Nigeria has a big task. Uh, fact is, uh, Nigeria, in in my opinion has a very a very like I said in the beginning they have the this big match against Argentina that is going to be the classic match with which can define also almost everything as as Argentina can make it with within within as Croatia yes uh, however uh, this Nigeria a difference of the Nigeria of 2014 they have a this great forward that for me is a great promise to 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 soccer or to world soccer that it's uh, Ikechi Ineacho, which is from Manchester City. But, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great bet in between, the Niger- in between the Nigerians. He's a great bet, but however, well, he was in Manchester City right now. He's in Leicester City. Uh, excuse my, my, my mistake. Uh, he's right now in Leicester City. But uh, he's still going up. He's still uh, running up for, for, to make it better. He's right now uh, in, still impressing, uh, as as far as he's not making it like 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 he did uh, last year. Last year he had a more than a, a impressive year, uh, but uh, now uh, he's got uh, he's ha- he has a chance. He has a chance uh, in the match between uh, against Argentina. Most most of it against Argentina because that match is classic, but uh, I don't see too much Nigeria making it this time. Because the individualities will rule up this wor- this this group, Group D. Uh, this uh, this uh, group within many egos, many many blood, uh, heat, uh, <laughs> heated blood. It's true. And, uh, and uh, I uh, I don't see Nigeria uh, surpassing that 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 heated blood that can have Argentina or Croatia. Uh, let's face it. This this work between uh, between be, in between together, it's uh, is not uh, such as impressive as, as Argentina or Croatia have. As far as Argentina is not making it also very well. Uh, let's see. Let's see if 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 the Nigerian team can also also impress me as Iceland can do it also. Because exactly. They they have they have this ideology of. Uh, well, in difference, uh, if we want to difference both teams, uh, Iceland has this ideology of names. Bef- uh, uh, excuse me, uh, men before names. Uh, what what am I saying about this? Uh, the team over the stars. Mm. 
Yep, and I would agree with that as well, too, because, yes, we've talked about this already, especially with, with Argentina. I mean, you might as well call them Messi. You don't even call them Argentina because everybody just knows Argentina as Messi. But Nigeria, I think, is great, and that's, I think, one of the reasons even, too, for as someone that's a fan of the United States as well, too. I mean, yes, we have the rise of Christian Pulisic, a young, talented player, but for so long, though, it was just this collective team. It's like, hey, let's just see who shows up and if we can actually do anything with the talent down the field. And I'm sure there's been times, too, for, you know, for Peru and for other teams that you gentlemen support as well, too, where you're like, we'll see what happens. You know, it's, 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 I think it's better for the team when it's a team unit and not the, oh, we've got the Neymar. Oh, we've got the Ronaldo. You know, it's, we've got a, a collective team. And I know that this will be talked about in another show, but even looking at a team like England, there's no one star in the England roster this year. You know, that's, that's another topic for another time, but... You know, you think about that, you know, thinking, you know, long term, you know, it's, it's interesting to think about. So we've already given our predictions for this group. We've already said that it's going to be Croatia and Argentina. Do either of you want to change your, your prediction? Do you want to say Nigeria gets out or do you want to stick with what you got? No, I'll stick with uh, Argentina and Croatia. So, so was I. So, so I, with you. Uh, Croatia first, like, uh, and after that, Argentina. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, see, it's interesting, too. Luis is very adamant. He's saying Croatia will win the group, not Argentina. And I uh, I have a hard time getting on that same boat as you, Luis. I, I really do. I, I still feel like Argentina is <laughs> going to find a way to, to win the group overall. But either way, um, that brings us to the, the end of our Group D preview here on the Your Soccer Passport. Uh, gentlemen, I want to thank both of you for uh, your insight and your knowledge on uh, Group D specifically. Uh, I know we've got a lot more exciting content coming up for people here for the other group previews and uh, if I'm not mistaken, both of you gentlemen are going to be doing a uh, Latin American team preview as well too to get a little bit more nitty gritty with all the teams from uh, Central, South and even just the CONCACAF area um, as well too. So I'm excited to hear that preview and the uh, the knowledge and the insight that you gentlemen will bring to that topic as well too. So uh, exciting things coming up for sure on the Your Soccer Podcast passport world cup edition uh yvonne before we let you go final thoughts from you about group d any other notes or things we should be looking out for as we get ready for group d play to kick off here in just a couple of days uh it'll be interesting to look at argentina last world cup they won all their games by one goal they didn't really dominate anybody and i'm looking for something similar in this world cup well, they just, they're not going to dominate anybody, and they're just kind of – they're going to get by like they did uh, like they did four years ago. But, yeah, thank you for having me on, uh, Baxter. Or, uh, anybody follow my writing on babel.com, B-A-B-E-L.com. My Twitter is Ivan Sanchez at I-S-D-A-R-R-23. Perfect. And final thoughts from you, Luis, and where people can find uh, any information that you're talking about uh, in the soccer world, sir. Well, actually, uh, we're making this full coverage of the World Cup in, in my radio show, Sentidos Deportivos, well, in the Spanish language. And if you guys want to also send me some questions, you can do it also on my Twitter, uh, dot, uh, Luis Buranca, all together. Fantastic. Luis and Ivan, it's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you for being here on the Group D preview here on the Your Soccer Passport. And thank you to listeners as well, too. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, Go over to Apple Podcasts. Wherever you find your podcast, you can find all of our previews for the Your Soccer Passport World Cup edition. Uh, You can connect with the show on Facebook and Public House Media as well, too. You can find them by going to thephmedia.com. For Ivan Sanchez and Luis Barranca, I am Baxter Colburn. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Your Soccer Passport World Cup Edition podcast.